We're going through the causeway between Singapore and Malaysia and today we're driving from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia which is something that I do pretty often because I now split my time between the two cities. Usually it's just go, 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 get there as fast as possible but today we are going to take our time, meander along the way, stop at some towns and get plenty of food. Oh, rocky. Good night. <laughs> actually not comfortable at all. <laughs> when Singaporeans usually cross the causeway, they're usually heading to Johor Bahru, JB, where they eat and shop for a fraction of the price that they can in Singapore. But we've skipped JB and we've gone a little bit further north to a town called Kulai, still in Johor State. And the reason I've always wanted to come here is I've heard a lot of it, about it from my mom because Kulai is actually a mainly Hakka Chinese town and my family on my grandmother's side is Hakka and we have some family links to this town but also it's known for Hakka food so that's what we're gonna eat This is the first food stop on our road trip This is Ke Jia Xiao Chu which literally translates to small Hakka kitchen and they specialize in all kinds of Hakka signature foods. So I'm very excited. They've got Lei Cha, which is thunder tea rice. They even have Suan Pan Zi, Hakka Abaka seeds, which is actually kind of my specialty. So I want to see what's up with theirs. They've got Hakka Yong Tau Fu, um, ginger wine omelette. Wow, this is really exciting. And they've got Hakka Choi Pan, which is um, like a really nice sticky translucent dumpling that's filled with vegetables. So I, I'm actually so hungry. We're like kind of behind schedule, so I haven't had breakfast. It's now lunchtime. It's time to eat. Mm. This is the Le Cha Fan, which is thunder tea rice. It's made with lots of herbs and nuts and you get this beautiful really complex broth that you pour over tons of veggies and rice mm. and this one is so good you get all the different textures from the chopped cabbage the nuts then you have hits of saltiness from the preserved radish and then tons of veggies and that broth at a lot of places they don't give you very much broth but here they're very generous with it which i love because i like it when it's soupy and this is just mm, comfort food for me, for sure. So we have a full spread of Hakka delicacies here. We've got the abacus, which, like I said, is one of my specialties. And this one is almost as good as mine, but it is actually really nice and chewy, sticky, savory. We also have something really interesting, very Malaysian. Nasi lemak, which is Malaysia's national dish with the sambal chili but with some hakka deep fried crispy pork I've never had this before Mmm! That actually kind of works Maybe I could do with a little bit of a curry sauce something a bit wet because everything's very dry but the crispiness of the pork with the spicy sambal and the rice it actually really works. And finally, this choy wah! This choy bun, which is, as you can see, very squishy and soft. And it's filled. And it's filled with chives. And I think firm tofu. Super aromatic, slippery. It's really good. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> That was pretty much like the Hakka meal of my dreams. It was so delicious. Everything tasted really authentic. Some things tasted really familiar because like I said, my family is Hakka. And although it's just my grandmother who was Hakka, I grew up with her and my grand aunt, my Ipo. So Hakka culture and Hakka food had a pretty big place in our family. And it was really nice to eat food that reminded me of them and reminded me of family gatherings.
one very deep nap later thanks to the pouring rain and my neck pillow i am ready for lunch number two so we are in yongping and this is the only stop that we're making today that i'm quite familiar with because this is our usual stop between kl and singapore it is ugh. in this random kind of slightly soulless corner of yongping is yongping duck noodle this stall serves hokkien style braised duck noodles i found it kind of randomly online one day, I tried it and I loved it. So I knew I had to stop here. The noodles and the chopped up braised duck are slicked in this really thick, herby, savory, soy-based gravy. I usually don't really love these yellow Hokkien noodles, but the ones here, they're really nice and flat. They have a beautiful bite and chew, and they really hold up to that complex gravy. And then you must, you must add some of their sambal chili. It gives it the perfect amount of kick. Yes! I honestly was feeling pretty full, but the moment this bit of food arrived at the table and I smelled it, I'm like, mmm, I could eat again. Mmm. There's so much flavor in that gravy. It's definitely got kind of, I would say like, a warm, familiar hug of Chinese herbs, but it's not overly medicinal tasting. It's not super salty, it's not heavily soy-based flavor. Everything just works together in harmony. It's very balanced. The textures work. It's just very, very good. And then, when you order the dry version, you also get a bowl of the herbal soup. And that is much more herbal, but it is so delicious. And you can taste the kind of savory meatiness of the duck that it's cooked with. It's just very good. I spoke to the auntie inside and I asked what kind of noodles these are because they're so good and so chewy. And she said they're actually not Hokkien noodles, they are Fu Chao noodles, which makes complete sense because like Kulai, here in Yongping, there is a majority Chinese dialect group. Here is the Fu Chao, also called the Hok Ju. And they have some very interesting dishes that are not often seen everywhere because they're kind of a smaller group. I've not had to take off my shoes at a little highway stop before, but this is cool. At least I know it's very clean. No free foot picks. So a lot of foodies, when they drive through Surimban, they tend to look for Chinese food because there are a lot of famous Chinese dishes that have come out of Surimban. It's particularly known for beef noodles, which are soft, tender bits of beef, noodles in this really thick aromatic soup, or also siu bao, which is like a flaky pastry bao that's filled with cha siu. But Surimban is the state capital of Negri Sembilan, and Negri Sembilan is known for its minangkabao food. So this is the place to try some proper Negri Sembilan minang food in Negri Sembilan. So right at the top, these are I would say like the signatures of Negri Sembilan Minang food, masak lemak daging salai. So daging salai is like a smoked meat and it's cooked in lemak. Masak lemak means cooked with coconut milk. It's usually spicy, coconutty, meaty, smoky, and it's really good. So we have to get that. Mmm! They have sambal tempoya daun. So it's like fermented durian with spices. <laughs> cooked down with leaves. I don't know, we shall see when it gets here because I'm definitely getting that. At this point, we were roughly six hours into our road trip for a journey that usually takes four hours. So I think I forgot to say anything to the camera, but all this food was really good. I loved the smoked meat in the masat lemak, and I loved this sambal tempoyak that was cooked with tapioca leaves. This was the perfect last super flavorful stop on this road trip, food trip. And then the night was starting to set in, so we got back in the car and drove on to KL, where this trip ended. 
So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.